Over the last week or so, I've had a number of people ask what type of computer or is their computer going to work for doing a home media NAS Plex type setup. I did say I was going to sort of suggest five or six different computers, but I think I've got a better way. So when you're using Plex, the big issue is the transcoding of the large video file. Let's say you've got 4K videos and they need to be transcoded so they can play well on a TV that maybe doesn't support 4K. A tablet, a laptop, or whatever may not be 4K supported. So the device has to process that file, that large file, shrink it down in real time so it can send it to whatever you're watching it on in the resolution that that supports, and that's essentially transcoding. Now, if you're using Plex, I'm not sure on Jellyfin and the other ones, but if you're using Plex, if you're not using a paid version, then it will not do GPU-supported transcoding. It will work on the CPU. Or if you've got a computer that doesn't have a GPU in it, or it's not particularly good, then everything's going to be on the CPU. So I'm making this guide as a reference that you can use when you are looking at what hardware to use for your media server. The guide I'm using is a thing called Passmark. You can search passmark.com. The reference it gives you is if you want to do a single 4K stream, then the Passmark number for that CPU has to be around 17,000 or more. If it's 1080p, then it's only 5,000. But what does that mean, right? You can see that an Intel i7 that is 3.8 gigahertz or more, or Apple M1, the, the first of the M1 versions, will do 4K, zero issues, you are good to go. Now that i7, that CPU, you can find in a ton of like two or $300, five, five or 6,000 baht secondhand computers. So it's really easy to find and it's like 10 years old, right? So there's tons of these and they're cheap. If you're really on a budget, then go for something like the i3, 3.2 gigahertz or more. You know, if you're trying to do a 4K file, then you're going to have buffering. It's not going to have a good time. When you're looking on like eBay or Facebook Marketplace, grab the CPU name, chuck it into Google and just put Passmark and search and look at the multi-threaded number. If it's 17,000 or above, and this is, you know, this is not an exacting science, but if it's around 17,000 or above, you are, you're pretty good to go on that. That's a CPU that you can use and you'll be absolutely fine. Now, if you're only using like a NAS, you're not doing any video streaming, then this is absolutely not not worth worrying about. You can run that on basically anything, but this is really, if you are doing a media server, then you need something with a little bit of grunt. And these are the three devices that I would just say, like start with either a Mac mini, you can use the Intel 2018 Mac minis. I had a 2012 Mac mini for like, it was running for like five years nonstop and it was great. So the, the Intel Mac minis, the M1s Mac minis, these are absolutely fine. You will be, you'll have no issue with that at all. If you don't want Mac, then the Dell Optiplex or the HP Elite Desk versions. These are also like, they are small, really compact, quiet, solid machines. They're, they're built for like an office. So they're, they're really built to last. As long as the CPU has that high rating, then these are solid machines to go for. And again, really cheap. Like these are everywhere. Be aware the Optiplex. Optiplex and the Elite Desk, they're going to be running Windows 10. Very likely, they are not going to have the secure boot chip that Windows 11 requires to be able to run. That means as of next month, I think September, Windows 10 is no longer officially supported unless you pay money. So it becomes a security risk to run Windows 10 at all. And in that case, if you go for one of those Windows type machines, I recommend watching another video I'll make where I'm going to talk about the operating systems, whether you go a bare metal system, turnkey system, or an overlay operating system. But if you're searching for a device, that's what I'm going to recommend.